So this month, what we are doing is an entire series all about listings. So today we're going to talk and I'm going to get into the information in just one second, but I do want to give you an overview very quickly of the entire listing series that we're doing so that you will know uh, what else to look out for. So today what we're going to talk about is five ways to secure a listing, right? So that's how to talk with sellers and get into relationship with them so that they agree to work with you. We are also going to talk about this month, 10 ways to find a listing. So if you're struggling finding listings, finding sellers that are looking to sell their home, we are going to be doing a panel of top listing agents throughout our market centers that are gonna share what exact strategies they're doing right now in this market to uh, sell, list and sell a lot of property. So that'll be 10 ways to find a listing. We're also gonna do an entire class on marketing your listing. So once you take a listing, how, what, is, what should the marketing strategy be so that you're getting to the closing table four times like we talked about, right? What does that marketing strategy look like? So we're gonna go from A to Z down, how you market your listings well to attract more listings, right? And a book of buyer business for yourself. We're also gonna cover an entire class of negotiating offers. So we know many houses right now are going into multiple offer situations. That's become the norm in our market. And so we're gonna dig really deep in an, in an, in an entire class. Rosemary Pilati, our operating principal of our, bro of our franchise is going to cover from soup to nuts, how to negotiate. How do you create a win-win scenario between the buyer and the seller? How do, you, how do you manage multiple offers coming in on a listing so that you're being fair to everybody and, and getting your seller the ultimate results that they're looking for? So we're gonna do a class on that. We're also gonna do a class on how to create a five-star customer service experience. So most real estate agents, the goal is always, and I know when, when I sell real estate, my goal is always to create a five-star customer service experience for my clients so that I get repeat and referral business. Repeat and referral business can be a really powerful, important way to build up your reputation in the area, to take market share, and to build a business that is highly profitable, right? So we're gonna do an entire class on how to create a five-star customer service experience so that you're getting referrals from your past clients, right? And your past clients are choosing to work with you again when they have their next buying or selling um, experience. So we know, that on average people buy and sell every seven to ten years it's kind of a long time frame right between the time you help somebody and they you hand them the keys to their house and then they start thinking about selling their home again right so there's a couple of things and buying something else and then that happens a couple more times during their lifetime. There's a couple of things that we know will help you. Um, one, create a great customer service experience so that they remember you. But also, even after the transaction is done, how do you stay? How do you stay in conversation and in relationship with your past clients so that you're getting their business again when it's time for them to buy and sell? And, and not only that, but also what we know to be true is that Every person knows on average seven people that are gonna move every single year. I would guarantee if you are somebody that has a, a strong book of business or a sphere of influence in New York City, those people probably know 15 or 20 people that are looking to make a move this year, right? So how are you in relationship with those people to get that business? That's what we're gonna cover during that class. And then we're gonna talk about bulletproofing your transactions. So once you do the hard work of you know, going through and getting somebody to agree to list their house with you, right? So you get them to agree to list the house with you. And then you go and you market the house, you spend money, you put marketing dollars behind it, you negotiate, you negotiate after the inspections, you have a buyer's agent on the other side, asking a million questions, right? You do all this hard work, and then the deal falls apart. I know I've been there before and it's not fun. So we're gonna teach a class all about strategies to bulletproof, we're calling it bulletproofing your transaction. So you'll, you will be able to bulletproof your transaction so that, um, so that you make sure that when you put a deal together, it's really solid. And especially in this market, I don't know about you, but we are seeing and I'm hearing from agents that they're putting deals together and buyers are getting cold feet or buyers are feeling like they overpaid or sellers are deciding not to sell. This happened to me three weeks ago. I had a seller, we listed their house, we got multiple offers on their house. We start more than they thought they would ever get for their property. We started looking at homes now that they could buy and they came to the realization of, I can't buy in this market. I don't, 
I would end up in an inferior home because of the pricing. So, so really like that's going to be part of the class. How do you bulletproof? How do you do a great consultation? So you set everybody's expectations up front about it. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is because you're going to take all these classes, list a big book of, of listings for yourself. How do you get help, right? Like when is it time to add in leverage to your business? Whether that leverage looks like administrative support or a buyer's agent or a piece of technology that can help automate things. What does that leverage in your business look like? And how do you put a system in place so that now that you have this like listing machine going, how do you create a, a work-life balance for yourself that doesn't drive you crazy and doesn't make you lose any money. So that's happening all throughout August. Um, if you are with us at KW, you obviously have access to our calendar. If you're not with us and you would like to attend the series, just feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email is Rita, M-R-I-T-A-M at KW.com. Email me, I will email you. Hi, Manny, I'll email you. Um, Oh, I'm so happy to see your face. I haven't seen you in so long. I will email you uh, the link to, uh, to register for the whole series of classes. All right, so we're going to dive right in because it's five tactics and I have 45 minutes to get through it. And I want to make sure we get through all the information. So the first, the first tactic that is super, super important when you are talking about um, guaranteeing a listing is to, as quickly as possible, get into relationship get into relationship with the seller as quickly as possible, okay? So you really want to, as quickly as possible, um, give me one second, okay. As quickly as possible, you want to get into relationship with the seller so that you start to draw them closer to you so that they want to ultimately list their home with you, okay? So this can be really important. And it starts with the initial phone conversation with them, really. It does start with building rapport with a seller from the moment that you first talk to them, okay? People will work with people that they like. And a lot of times, actually, if say, say a seller is interviewing two or three agents, right? Even if the other agent has a better, better sales stats, more market share in that town, if you do a really great job of getting into relationship with that seller and, and creating a connection with them up front, uh, they will list with you. They will list with you over that top producer. I guarantee it because people work with people that they like and they want to feel that connection. So you might be asking, okay, that's great. How do I do that really quickly? And the easiest way is when you're on this first initial phone conversation with them and building rapport, really what you want to do is uh, ask a lot of questions, okay? It's as simple as that. The person asking the questions controls the conversation. That is true in any scenario. That's true in negotiations. That's true in any scenario. The person asking the questions is the person that controls the conversation. So you want to be the person asking most of the questions, right? And allowing the other person to speak, right? It, during a phone com consultation and also during the listing presentation, for the vast majority of the listing presentation, the seller should be speaking. If you're coming to find yourself being put in a position where you are constantly talking and you're starting to sound like a billboard, stop and ask a question, okay? It just naturally, psychologically brings people closer to you if they feel like they're being heard, considered, and they're not just here on a, some sales pitch to get you to list with them. So this can be a habit though that can be a, not necessarily by default that you'll do this. This is definitely a habit that you have to put into place in practice, but if you're really able to switch your conversations into asking more questions and allowing the seller to speak, right? That the more you will get um, into relationship with them quickly, okay? And you'll also find out a ton of good information that you'll need to, in order to do a great listing consultation just by doing it that way. So you wanna build rapport with them by asking a lot of questions. One of the questions, one of the first questions should really be, why are you selling your home? When, where are you going, right? What is your plan for your home? What is leading you to want to sell your home? And, and where are you planning to move from once I sell your home for top dollar and in the quickest amount of time? Okay, the quicker you can find out somebody's why, why they're selling, 
the quicker you will be able to manage the entire transaction, right? People, for the most part, do not just move to make money. Like they're not moving because they want to make 50 grand and put it in their pocket, right? Especially when it comes to real estate and residential real estate, people are moving because of some sort of something is going on in their personal life. Maybe they have a new job. Maybe they just lost their job. Maybe their kids have left for college and they need to downsize. Maybe they just got married and they need to buy their first home, right? Find out what that motivation is for them to sell right up front as soon as possible. And that is going to help you times a million through everything else because this is the other, this is the other part of it. When you talk about bulletproofing a transaction, what's really important is that you understand somebody's motivation, right? Because if somebody's motivation is to, for instance, sell their house and they're moving to Florida because that's where their grandchildren are. Well, when it comes to, say you get to the house, now there's a home inspection. Now the buyer's asking for credits or repairs or giving you a hard time about it. If you take the hard line of, well, it's only going to cost you $5,000 or no, let's, you know, let's say no to whatever their requests are and you don't work to find some win-win solution to keep the deal moving forward you will have a tough time keeping deals together. Now, conversely, if you're able to look at your seller and say, okay, these buyers, they're asking for a $2,500 credit. My goal is to get you to your grandchildren as soon as possible in Florida. And so let's talk about our options, right? We can go back to them and we can give them a $1,500 credit. We can go back to them and agree. We can go back to them and say no, and that's okay to do too. But if we say no, then we're going to be putting the house back on the market. And if we put the house back up on the market, then we're going to have to explain to every buyer that comes along what happens with the pending deal. And then we're also potentially going to run in the same problem with the next buyer who might make the same request. And so you told me when we had the consultation that was most important to you was to get down to Florida before the first snowfall to spend the holidays with your grandkids. And I just want to check in and make sure that that's still the case right? Now you're relating to them. You're helping them with what's important to them. So finding out what somebody's why is for their sale is the most important part. I've coached and trained real estate agents for two and a half years now through our, uh, through our office. And it's surprising to me how many times I'll be coaching an agent through a difficult transaction and I'll say to them, why is your seller selling? And they don't know. And they could be two or three months in to this relationship with the seller and still honestly not know what is the driving motivation behind it. So the quicker that you can do that and remember that, the quicker you can get into relationship with sellers too because you really understand what's motivating them, right? You can, you can tie it all together so that you are getting them to their ultimate goal of whatever their ultimate goal is which in turn creates a great customer service experience, creates referral opportunities, creates repeat business, right? It's all important. So that's, that's really important. Um, and then you want to make sure that, again, you're, you're, um, you're building rapport with them because people are going to work with people that they like. So that's the first tactic is to build rapport, ask more questions, do more question asking than you are talking, and find out somebody's true motivation for selling up front as soon as possible. I have a seller lead sheet that I will send out to everybody that took the class today. And when I'm on the phone with an initial consultation with the seller, I just zip down the sheet and it includes all of the questions so that I make sure I cover all my bases and get the information that I need. And I also have the sheet formatted in a way that leads the conversation down so that you're building rapport with somebody. Okay. Now, tactic number two, and this is going to take a little bit of practice and probably a little bit of, um, of studying in order to, to nail this one. But tactic number two is to identify your, the seller's disc profile. Okay, and then put into place mirror and matching so that again, you get into relationship with them quickly. Okay, so if all of that seems foreign to you and you're not sure exactly what I mean by that, let me explain. The DISC profile is a personality assessment. Everybody falls within one of four personality traits and usually you're high on two and low on two others. So DISC, D-I-S-C, stands for the four types of personality traits, a D, an I, an S, or a C. And I'm going to run down what each one means and how to work with each personality type. Okay. 
You can also, if you're curious what yours is, actually the first step really is to figure out what yours is because then you'll understand how to work with other people because you'll understand how you work. Um, the easiest way is Tony Robbins. He has the free disc assessment right on his website. What I'm going to do, everybody that attended the class today, you're gonna get an email from me that's gonna have a bunch of attachments to it. With that, I'll link to the disc assessment. Um, and, and I would encourage anybody to take it. And if you take it and you would like to go over it with me, please email me, uh, RitaM at kw.com, and I'm more than happy to set up a consultation with you to review your DISC profile. But so, okay, so everybody falls into two, cat two of usually of those four categories, and you're usually high on one, and then like kind of high on another one, and then the other two are kind of low. So we're just gonna start. The quicker that you can figure out somebody's disc, and I'm gonna give you a couple tips to be able to do this quickly. The quicker you can figure out somebody's disc profile, the quicker you can figure out how to work with them effectively, okay? And some of this is, it's gonna make sense. So the D stands for dominant, okay? Those are your driving personalities. Those are your drivers, okay? These are the people that are very direct. They're to the point. They use what instead of how. So they will, automatically when you start talking to them, jump to what they want the end result to be, okay? What they want to see, where they're going with their home sale. Usually you're gonna learn from them right away why they're selling because they're just gonna cut to the chase and be like, I need to sell my house because we don't wanna pay high taxes in New York, we're moving to North Carolina. You're like, great, perfect, check that box, right? So these are the people that want the bottom line. They're usually what you hear as like a type A personality. You typically find that they might be like executives or high powered business people or people with authority in, in their profession, or they're like the, you know, the mom that like manages the whole household seamlessly. Those are your high D's, your drivers. In order to work with somebody that's a high D effectively, you have to get to the point quickly. They will not tolerate nonsense, right? Like they won't tolerate small talk. That's another thing. You don't want to get into a ton of small talk with them. You'll you, just, their brain will be like, oh gosh, get to the point, right? So to work with them effectively, you want to get to the point. You want to be concise and get to the bottom line, right? Like these are your 30 minute listing presentations. You go in, you tell them what you're going to do to market their house. They tell you what they want out of the deal. You, you know, you handshake. They usually are fast talkers um, and you get to the point, right? You also want to make sure when you're working with them that you're highlighting the results you're going to get for them. That's what they want to know. They want to know that you as a real estate salesperson is going to be able to typically sell their house for the most money in the shortest amount of time. Now, all sellers really want that, but high Ds, that's like most important to them. And so everything that you're doing when you're talking to them about your strategy should revolve around getting them results, right? And this should be how you're posing your listing presentation to them. Um, and, and you don't want to do a lot of small talk. So you want to get to the point, you want to be concise and talk about the bottom line, highlight the results you're going to get them, and um, don't do a lot of, of uh, small talk. That's your high D personality. Now the next one is your I, so that's your influence. Okay, these are your people that are like life of the party, they're enthusiastic, they're outgoing, they are persuasive when they talk, they are animated when they walk into the room, they're talking to everybody, they're generally considered a social butterfly, okay? These are people that uh, want to get into relationship with people, right? So the high D is gonna be more like, how are you going to be a great player from, you know, how are you gonna get me my results? And, that, and I'll get into relationship with you if you're gonna get me the results I want. The people that are high I, they want to, they're like the people that want to be your friends, right? They will start telling you stories. You will hear when you go on the listing presentation. These are the people that will walk around and tell you all about entertaining. We have big Thanksgiving dinners in the dining room. My kids played on that swing set. The basement was perfect when we had birthday parties. The pool's been amazing entertainment. Like everything kind of revolves around social being outgoing, being talkative. And so somebody that's a high I personality to win with them, you really wanna build rapport with them, right? And, and the easiest way to build a rapport with somebody that's a high I is letting them talk, right? Allowing them to vocalize their ideas. The easiest way to do that, ask them a bunch of questions. High eyes will love you if you ask them a bunch of questions. You also want to make sure, though, when you're working with somebody that's a high I, because one of the personality traits is that a lot of times they might lack follow through or follow up. So these are the people that you kind of have to put into a system and then follow up with them a bunch about it. They're not going to do it by nature, usually. 
And they're also going to be able to relate to you quickly if you put examples into stories, right? So when you're talking to a high D personality, you probably are going to give examples of results you've gotten for other people, uh, sales awards you might have gotten, your status as a top producer, whatever it is, you know, in that way, and they're going to be attracted to that. With a high eye, you might get into conversation with, I, you know, I helped somebody the next block over, they were doing the same thing, three kids, they need to downsize, tell them stories, right? They'll, they're, they're more emotional and they will get into to relationship with you if you, if you get into their emotions and you use stories to create that relationship. So that's a high eye. That's somebody that's a high eye. Somebody that is an S is usually steady and stable. Okay, so that's what the S stands for, steady slash stable. So they're predictable, they are even tempered, they're shy, they're very loyal usually, they're very good at systems, they like the status quo, they want to kind of know what the outcome is going to be, they're very cautious to make decisions, okay, they like to analyze things and look at things from all angles, they do not want to be pressured into making any type of decision quickly, um, and, and so in order to work with them effectively, you have to be very patient with these people, okay, you have to be really patient with them, um, because if they feel like you're pressuring them into making a decision, they're going to back completely off. And so have you ever had a client, let's say a buyer, and you go and show the house and you know it's going to sell really quick. Like you just know because you've been showing houses and you know how the market is. And so you tell these people, listen, if you like the house, genuinely, you're going to have to make an offer probably in the next 24 to 48 hours if you want it to be considered. Now, high D and high I personality is gonna be like, go for it, we want this house, let's do it. A high S is gonna to totally freak out about that. Totally freak out about that. These will also be the sellers that when you get them an offer very quickly for a lot of money, they kind of are like, uh, I don't know, it's like, I'm processing that. That's a lot of information, right? They're very, slow and methodical. So when you're working with them, you're going to provide a lot of answers to questions, mainly around how, right? So these are gonna be the people that email you, how, how is this gonna work? What is the process for this? What is the next step? So what are we doing here? How is, how is the home inspection going to go? How do we know this? How do we, you're gonna hear a lot of questions from your sellers that are high S's and your buyers that are high S's are gonna be the ones that take the home inspection report and point by point go through it and go, can you ask them the last time the screws were turned in the fan? Can you figure out what light bulbs are used in the chandelier? Can you ask them to what type of pine, you know, what type of wood flooring? It, these are the people that are gonna be like, a lot of information, kind of slow, wanna read over the home inspection report, take a little bit to get the attorneys involved. Those are your S's, right? Those are your S's. Now, I'm gonna go over C's and then I'm, and then I'm gonna give you a couple tips on how to figure out who's what. So the C is your conscientious person. These are the people that are systematic, they're very precise, they are very detailed oriented, and they're interested in the system and process of things, including numbers. So the way that you're gonna win with somebody that's an S is by speaking to them factually. So giving them data to assist them in making their decisions. So if you're able to say to them, okay, in your neighborhood, homes are selling on average 98% of list price to sell price is where homes are selling. That is a fact that a high C is going to like. Now, because it covers all personalities, if you try that with somebody that's in high I, they're gonna be like, don't care, don't care, you know, or somebody that's a D is probably gonna be like, that's nice, so you should be able to get us 102% of the listing price because they're, they're, that's their personality type, right? So somebody that's a high C though, you can really shine with them if you give them facts and figures and they're able to put something into a system. So if you're able to, at the consultation, explain the roadmap of how do you list a home and then get them to the closing table, right? With like something written out that will help them and even percentages that they can anticipate. That's really how you're gonna work well with somebody that is a high C. So you wanna use data, you wanna be prepared, right? These are the people that show very prepared, they don't wing it, they're very prepared and analytical. Um, you wanna give them systems and checklists to work with in. Other personality types, 
they're not might not work within systems and checklists you figure out who is an s and a c they will work within your systems and checklists and you want to use facts and figures as examples so it you know for the for the high d again you might use the example of i sold the house uh you know i sold the house of uh, road over for in 48 hours we had 10 offers we sold ten thousand dollars over asking price right that that's gonna be like Oh, cool. Like in the high D's mind, it's going to be great. She's telling me the information that I exactly want. The high I, it might be, we hosted an open house. We got 50 people through the door, lots of great people. We ended up with 10 offers. The home sold to really, you know, really great buyers. Everybody was friendly throughout the transaction. It was a really smooth process. I'm going to connect you with all my, you know, my attorneys, my people that I work with. It's going to be a great experience and we're all going to get a lot out of it, right? That, that might draw them to that. Somebody that's an S, if you go to somebody that's a high S personality and go, I sold the house a block over for 10 grand over asking price in 48 hours, they might have a heart attack. And honestly, you might lose, you might lose the listing because they're like, oh my gosh, what? I, that seems like way too crazy for me. With somebody that's a high S, it might be so we were able to list the house and we got some great feedback and we were able to, within a couple of days, get a number of offers that my clients then were able to review for themselves, right? And pick out the most favorable one for them. So we got them a bunch of offers and then we sat down and we analyzed the offers with them to make sure that they were getting the best value for their house, most money, least amount of time, right? Same thing with the C's. The C's might be listed the next, the house over, we got $10,000 over asking price, 48 hours, 10 offers. All facts and figures, right? <clears throat> so this is a way you can guarantee the, the listing, excuse me, is honestly just by identifying what personality profile these people are and then mirror and matching your tonality and your the way that you're speak the language that you're using when you're speaking to them to match what in their brain is going to click and be like this is my person like this is my person they have to list my house right so <clears throat> a couple things to keep in mind number one most top real estate agents we're top salespeople because we're high d's and high i's that is i mean if you look at a profile of a thousand real estate agents i would say the vast majority of the ones that are doing the big books of businesses are high D's and high I's. We're good at making friends, right? And we're good at selling stuff. <laughs> that's, that's what it takes to be a good real estate agent. That being said, about 80% of the population is gonna be an S and a C, right? So you have to keep in mind that if you go in hot to trot, like your personality of, I sell stuff fast and I'm front, blah, 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 like zipping around, it's only gonna work for like a small percentage of people. Most of like 80% of the people you're gonna be talking to are going to feel in some sense kind of put off by that because they're gonna be like, this person is not like me. And this person doesn't think like me. And, and I don't know if I can get into a relationship with them because I don't know like if it's gonna mesh here, right? So you can go in thinking, I'm gonna impress them because I have all these sales stats and I have a great marketing plan and blah, 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 and totally, <clears throat> overshoot what's important to them because one you don't know what's why they're selling right if you don't discover that but two you you don't tailor the conversation around what's going to make sense in their head and and so you lose them right <clears throat> i'm sorry so that's why it can be so important to figure out these personality profiles so now you might be saying cool but i'm not gonna like have every seller go on to tony robbins website and take the disc assessment so how do we do this in a relatively quick manner. Um, the quickest way is when you're on the phone with a seller you're, and you're set in the listing appointment, ask them to describe their house to you. Okay, that's it. Ask them to describe their house. You will know very, very quickly, usually, what personality profile you're working with. Somebody that's a D is gonna go like this. Oh, my house is the best one on the block. It, we have granite, we have a bigger yard than our neighbors. We got a great deal on it when we bought it five years ago. We've put so much work, we've spent all this money to make it the most like Shangri-La on the, on the road. Like it's just amazing, right? That's gonna be your high D. Somebody that's a high I is going to be like, 
oh, we've lived here for 30 years. We raised our children here, our kids. We have a great backyard. The pool is where we have parties all summer. We have a big 4th of July celebration. The dining room fits 12 people. We have our big Thanksgiving dinner. You're going to hear about entertaining, right? Somebody that's an S, you're probably going to hear about their family. You're probably going to hear about their family interactions. So you're going to hear from them. You know, it was really loving home for, uh, you know, for my husband and I, or it was my sanctuary for many years here. And I really just enjoyed, you know, having, um, having, having a house. They're going to be kind of slow and thoughtful when they explain the home to you. And it's going to be, you know, a little bit more information about what the home actually means to them, like the feeling of the home. That's somebody usually that's a, that's an ass. Somebody that a C that's a C is gonna go. We replaced the roof. We have a 30-year shingle on our roof, and our boiler is 10 years old, and we have hardwood flooring throughout the first floor and four bedrooms. And they're not, like you're not gonna know any entertaining, you're not gonna know how it compares to the other houses, you're not gonna know who even lives in the house with this person, but you're gonna like know all of the facts and figures of this house. That's somebody that's an S. Like that's just how their mind works, right? That's just the way their mind works. So let me give you a, a, a helpful hint, okay? This doesn't just apply to listing presentations. This applies in any situation in the world, okay? This applies to working with buyers. This applies to negotiating offers with other agents. This applies to working with your database and lead generating. If you can study and get really, really good at identifying what somebody's personality profile is, accepting that maybe what drives you nuts about other people is not because they're just not doing it the way you're doing it, it's because legitimately their brain is wired differently, right? And so you have to come from com compassion, have compassion and understand, right? Like seek first to understand, like we always talk about, why a buyer is asking a million questions? Why, is, why it's important to the seller to invite us to every social gathering once we get into conversation? Why this seller is asking us the square, you know, every single, to come in and measure three times the house. It's not because they're gonna drive us, they're doing it to drive us nuts, right? They're doing it because that's the way their brain is gonna input information so that they can move forward in the deal. So the easiest way to close somebody Get them to agree to work with you to identify what disc profile they are and mirror and match your presentation to match that. If anybody needs help with this, please email me. I'm more than happy to set up a 15 minute com consultation, Rita M at kw.com, and we can cover this. You're also going to receive in an email from me after this a cheat sheet where I have all four of the personality profiles, what the traits are, and then how to work best with those people. So for attending today, thank you so much for attending today. And you're going to get that in an email. Okay, so we're only on two. So I'm going to zip through because we have 20 minutes and I want to make sure that I have time to answer questions. But then that was really the, I would say these first two, if you do these first two really well, know somebody's disc profile and get into conversation with somebody, you could like, kind of botch the rest of it. I don't think anybody on this call is going to botch anything, but you could kind of like not do a great job on other things and people will still probably recommend you to people. I mean, that's just the key, right? Okay. So tactic three, we're assuming nobody's botching anything and you're still going to do everything the best way because you're going to take the rest of the listing series with us, right? And learn how to. All right. So tactic three is knowing the market inside and out, right? So, so many studies have shown Home sellers, they like to look at what's going on in their neighborhood. Sellers care about almost nothing else, homeowners, except for what everybody, what their neighbors are doing, what their neighbors are getting for their house, how quick their neighbor's home is selling, all of that good stuff, right? That's why we, that's why if you're with Keller Williams, we recommend that you put everybody in your database on a neighborhood nurture smart plan. That's sending out either once a month or twice per month, automatically without you doing anything, a snapshot of their neighborhood, which is telling them not and not their zip code, like their neighborhoods, like the couple blocks around where they live, what houses are coming on the market, what's sold, what their average price is. And even if somebody's not thinking about selling, it is information that they're interested in, right? So people keep an eye on that stuff. So when you go on to a listing appointment, you have to know their immediate market better than they do. You will lose somebody very quickly if if they know about a house that sold and you don't know, you don't know how much it sold for, you don't really know what the house was like, 
you're going to lose them very, very quickly because ultimately, you know, for the most part, sellers are selling, uh, are working with us to get them high price, the best price, the fastest amount possible. And many of them perceive that is due to, and they're not wrong, working with somebody who knows the market really well. Okay. So you have to know the market. So we talk about know, knowing the market that looks like what's the average days on market, right? In their, in their neighborhood, in their town, in their zip code, in the county as a whole, where are buyers coming from right now? What is your marketing strategy for buyers, right? That's important. We're going to get into that in tactic four. Do you know comps without directly looking at a CMA? Meaning that as you're going through the listing presentation with them, do you, can you insert information about the comparables around their neighborhood? <clears throat> without having to have something in front of you showing it to them, right? Do you um, know what the list price to sell price ratio is? So if somebody lists their home in their neighborhood, what percentage of the list price they are they getting? Is everything going into multiple offers? Or are things sitting for a little bit longer? What are the houses that are going into multiple offers? What do they look like? What price range are they in? What style there are they in? What, you know, why are they selling so fast? Conversely, you really have to know the houses that are sitting, what's their deal? Like, why are they sitting? Are they overpriced? Are they a style that buyers right now in the market don't want? Are they in a busier location so it's sitting for a little bit longer, right? You have to know the market in the area. The quickest way to know this is every single day, look at the hot sheet on whatever MLS you're a member of. Go in, I look like twice a day. I look in the morning, I look in the evening. What's new? What's gone under contract? And what's sold? When you're looking at what's sold, look at the list price versus the sale price and the days on market. Every single day, two times a day. If there's nothing else you do to help yourself be a better real estate agent, do that. Because at the end of the day, we're salespeople, right? And what we're selling is the homes on the market. And if you aren't able to talk about that knowledgeably to a seller or a buyer for that matter, it's, it's not, it's not going to go over well. Um, the other thing that you want to make sure that you do is a little bit of recon work, right, on this listing before you get on the listing presentation. So a lot of times you will go on a listing presentation, you've never been in the house, you have not been to the house yet, so you don't necessarily know what you're walking into. And very easy hack is to go onto the MLS, see if the house has been listed before, right? So you're already, when you're talking to them on the phone, going to ask them, okay, describe your house to me, right? That's how you're going to kind of figure out what personality profile they are. But then what you want to do is go and look and see if the house has ever been listed on the MLS before. I'll, and I'll give you an example in my own real estate business. One of my first listing presentations I ever went on, it was um, a house that had been listed like maybe three or four years prior. So I went onto the MLS and I looked up <clears throat> the listing description and the listing description um, described bamboo flooring. And you know, I was like a newly licensed agent. I didn't know anything about anything. I didn't certainly like at that point could not spot bamboo flooring, which has a very specific look to it, which now I can, but at the time I wouldn't have been able to spot that for anything, but it said in the listing description, bamboo flooring. So I'm like, okay, bamboo flooring, I have to remember that. I'm going to bring that up when I get on the listing presentation. And that's exactly what I did. We go on the listing presentation and we walk in and I'm like, these are a beautiful floor. It's bamboo, correct? And they're like, it is, right? Now, automatically, these people, I'm showing up to them as, a, as an authority, right? I'm complimenting them. So that's always, that's never a bad thing. But I'm showing up as an authority that I have an idea of what's going on in their house. It's automatically kind of like setting the tone that I'm knowledgeable, even though it was like one of my first listing presentations and who knows how knowledgeable I actually really was in, in reality. Um, but you, sometimes you got to fake it a little bit until you make it. So do the recon work, right? Go on, see if you can find an old listing. See if you can find an old listing that talks about the age of the roof, the age of the furnace. That Those might be things you bring up. Hey, the furnace is looking like maybe it's, um, you know, 10 years or more older. Is that the case? Or your roof looks great. It looks like maybe it's only about eight years young, you know, like things like that can really help you get into relationship with people and show up as an authority on the listing presentation. 
Now, the other thing you can do is look on the Realist Tax Program, right, which is offered through most of the MLSs. And through there, you can find out the sales history. So when did they buy the house and how much did they pay? What type of mortgages do they have on the property? That can give you an idea of maybe what they're going to need to get out of the house, depending on how long ago they had they put that mortgage on. Um, so take a look at that, right? Take a look at if there's a list of improvements, meaning you'll see the shed, a pool, a whatever, detached garage. Take a look at that because if you show up to the listing appointment and you don't, and you start seeing garages and sheds and pools and all this like stuff that you didn't necessarily see on the tax information, those are some you know questions you, you need to ask. And, and also that's another way that you become knowledgeable to these sellers and valuable to these sellers because you already know to bring that up. So it's putting you in front of them as, as, a, as a professional. Um, okay, so that's tactic number three. So let me ask before we do tactic four and five, does anybody have any questions? And you can either type it into the chat or, um, or just come off mute and let me know. And I'll speak at once. <laughs> All right, okay, good, that's good. Okay, so tactic number four is to know your elevator pitch and your unique value proposition. So your unique value proposition is what makes you stand out over the thousands of real estate agents in our market, right? Like there's a lot of people that are real estate agents and most people, if they know one realtor, they know like five, right? I know, I live in New Paltz. Um, Oh, good. Yes. R Richie, email me. I'm more than happy to help. Um, I, I live in New Paltz. I grew up in New Paltz. And I know, um, like me, plus five other people I went to high school with are all real estate agents in New Paltz. I mean, that's just the case. So if you know me, you know, like a million, you throw a rock and hit another person in our age group that sells real estate. So what is it then that makes you stand out from other people, right? And, and how well can you kind of regurgitate that to somebody on a listing presentation? You know it stands out. Now listen, everybody's, everybody is gonna walk into a listing presentation and go, I'm gonna list your home on Zillow and realtor.com and I'm gonna use professional photography, which by the way, if you're not using professional photography, please, I beg of you to come to this marketing class. Um, but everyone's gonna say that, right? Like any reasonable good real estate agent is gonna say, I use professional photography and I send out just lists of postcards and I do blah, 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 blah. What are you going to say to somebody that is going to make you stand out? Now, there's a couple of things that you can do. You can figure out your own unique selling proposition, meaning what sets you apart. You can also figure out what your brokerage has to offer, right? So you can bring up to people, if you're a Keller Williams agent, that Keller Williams is, this is how I would explain it. Keller Williams is the largest real estate franchise in the country. We're number one in closed units, closed volume, and agent count, which Mr. and Mrs. Seller means nothing to you, and I know that. But what it does mean is that we have a large uh, realtor network, referral network, all throughout the country. And we all work together to help home buyers and sellers wherever they're at. So what that means for you is that when I list a property that's with, when I list a property, it goes into what's called the Keller Williams Listing Syndicate, which shoots out to over 300 websites. So any, so not just Zillow and realtor.com and that kind of stuff, but any place somebody lands on a property, uh, lands on a website and there's homes listed for sale, your home is gonna show up there. Okay. Now, in addition to that, because we have 160,000 plus real estate associates in our brokerage and we like to refer business only with each other, you know, and because what we're seeing now is home buyers from New York City, where we have thousands of real estate agents, right, are moving up here. So those agents, they're looking for KW agents up here. I'm sure there's people on the call that have received referrals. I've received endless referrals over the past couple of months. I highlight that. So I have, I, I have a network of agents in the city and agents in the five boroughs that work with my company that refer me business. So when they have a buyer that's coming up here and they refer me the business, who, where, do, where do you think I bring those buyers first, Mr. and Mrs. Seller? I bring them to my listings. Of course, the first thing I will do is bring them to your house if it matches what they're looking for. 
right? We also have a referral platform and I'll go into a little bit about that, about how you can go into the system and I can pull up from anywhere. And when they pull up my name, there's certain things that pop up that makes it so that I get a good amount of referrals, right? So I bring that up. So how can you do, how does that transit into your own business? If you're, if you're your new agent um, starting out, that might be what you use, right? Use the power of the brand that you're working with. If you're a very established agent in an area, wh whether you're with us or not, use that. Like use your, use your, uh, your marketing tactic. You might have great strategies for getting in front of neighbors or you might ha you know, have a network of people in New York City. Whatever it is, know it. And then also be able to pretty quickly explain it though, like an elevator pitch. So in under two minutes, can you explain to me what makes you a better real estate agent than anyone else is going to sit across the table from them? And then keep in mind, it might not be the same elevator pitch for every person. Because if you're getting to know their personality style and the way that they work and the way that you can win business with them, it might not be the same person, you know, unique selling proposition for each of them. You might tailor it a little bit, right? Depending on the rapport and the relationship you're building with them. So that's tactic number four. And then tactic number five is don't be afraid to close the deal, right? If you do the hard work of lead generating or somebody calls you and they want to list their home for sale, you set the appointment with them, you prepare for the appointment, you print out your marketing stuff, you print, you do a CMA for them, you know, you do the whole deal. Then you get on the listing appointment. Don't not ask for the business. Age, I've seen agents do this so many times. They, they feel like, oh, if they were going to list with me, they would just tell me. Like, they'd just be like, okay, this is the thing about people. You have to tell them what to do next, right? You have to, like, get, ask them directly to list with you. So here's a couple easy, I have six minutes, so a couple very easy closing tactics. Again, if you want to practice these with me or want more information on these, email me, ritaem at kw.com. I'm more than happy to, to shoot you out a link um, to schedule a consultation with me or we can go over this. But the first, the first these, these are just like basic sales tactics. The first one is to future pace people, okay? Future pace people. Tell them what the next steps are. So for the easiest example on a listing appointment is to say to somebody, once we sign the agreement, once we come to terms on the listing price and you sign the agreement, I'm going to have my photographer in here within 48 hours to take the professional photography and we're going to start the marketing stuff, right? So you want to kind of dangle the carrot of this is what's going to happen next and this is the next step. And in order to get to the next step, you're going to have to sign the listing paperwork and work with me, right? So future piece them. Always be talking about what's going to be happening next. This works with buyers very well too. This is what's going to happen next. So when you're leaving showings, okay, what's going to happen next is I'm going to go ask the listing agent these three questions. You're going to go talk to your mortgage broker and have them run the numbers based on the taxes to tell you what your monthly payment's going to be. We're going to reconvene in six hours and decide if we're writing an offer. Same thing for listings. Same thing, right? And do it like throughout the process. Okay, so the pictures are done. So what's going to happen next is I'm going to get them back in 48 hours. We're going to get your house on the market. You're going to get a thing from showing time to set up an account. You're going to see my social media posts roll out, right? Always be telling people what they can expect next. That way they are looking forward to something and you're keeping them engaged and connected with you. Okay, second one is what's called a trial close. Okay, so as you're on a listing presentation, you should be asking them questions on, and I do in a different class all on a list, just the listing presentation. So stay tuned for that. We'll probably run that again in September when we run Ignite, we'll do the listing class again. Um, but you wanna ask questions that end with yes, yes. They're just yes and no questions, right? The more somebody says yes, psychologically, the more likely they are to say yes, at the end, even if what they were saying yes to had nothing to do with like listing with you, the more likely they're going to say yes to you when you go to close them and tell them the next step is to sign the listing paperwork. Okay, so here, here's an easy couple examples of like, you know, getting them to say yes throughout the conversation. So you explain whatever your marketing is. I, I boost social media ads. I get in front of 10,000 people. Can you see how that would put your home in front of a lot of buyers? They're going to go, yeah, nobody's going to say no. They're going to say yes. Do you, okay, so I'm going to have my professional photographer come in. Would you agree that it's important that you have professional photography on your house, right? Nod, right? This is another like subconscious thing, nod. 
They'll go, yes, mm -hmm, absolutely. Do you agree that this price, that when I explain the CMA in this way to you, that if we were to price your house in this range, that we would be able to secure a buyer rather quickly, right? You're getting buy-in with every single one of them and you're subconsciously reinforcing in their heads, yes, Rita's gonna market my home and get in front of buyers. Yes, the price she's telling me is reasonable for the market. Yes, what she's gonna do, the plan she's laying out is important and is something that I can't say no to, right? So the more that you can get people to say yes, right? The more, the more, the easier it's gonna be when you go to go, okay, so the next step is to sign the agreement. Now, that being said, you can get people to say yes 10 million times and they can still give you an objection at the end, right? A lot of times the objection looks like, well, let me think it over. We have to interview other real estate agents. You know, I had to talk to my wife. She's not here. I have to talk to my husband. He's not here. He's the real decision maker. There's some strategies around avoiding that. But what you want to do is isolate that objection, right? In, in this manner by saying, is there, is there anything else aside from talking to your wife that would keep you from listing the property with me? And if they, they might give you an objection, like something that you didn't even cover because you don't even know, but it's rattling around in the back of their head and now's their chance to tell you about it. It's like a backdoor way to get them to, to figure out what's going on in their mind. So I'm going to say it again. Is there anything that would keep you, as, aside from that, so aside from having to figure out what the market's doing right now in Florida and if it's a good time to buy there, is there any other reason why you wouldn't list with me? Okay, they might give you a reason. If they give you a reason, handle that objection, right? Know your unique selling proposition so that you can explain it back to them about, okay, I, I hear you that you're interviewing other brokers or you're gonna talk to somebody who maybe does more business in this area. Here's why I think that I can counteract. So aside from that, is there any other reason why you wouldn't sign a listing agreement with me? Keep asking it and go around and around and around with them until they, and there will be a point where they go, no, there's no other reason. And now you know, one, you've closed out the conversation in their head. So subconsciously you've closed out the conversation in their head where they've, they've closed the loop, right? You've asked them enough times where they've worked through all the questions they might have, right? And if you're really in relationship with them, they'll be honest with you. And you've handled all those objections. Instead of ending the appointment, them going, we'll be in touch. And then they're, they call you and they're like, well, we decided to go with a broker that was going to discount their commission. And you're like, what do you mean? I said I was going to like do all the social media stuff. What's going on here? Right? Like you got to go through the whole rigmarole with them. What, what else could it be? Is there anything else? Is there anything else? Close out the conversation, handle all those objections, then go for the agreement, right? And the final thing is, and I'll say this in under 60 seconds, is to make sure you actually ask for the business, right? Like make sure you are asking people for the business. That's the key. If you go on a listing presentation, the best way to guarantee you're gonna get the listing is by actually asking people to list their home with you, right? You can use embedded commands. If anybody's taken bold, we know about embedded commands. That is when you pause, then you put the commands in, which generally on a listing presentation is, List with me, then you pause again, then you go on with the sentence. If you want more information on what that is, schedule a consultation with me, I'm happy um, to explain that. But don't forget to ask for the business. So the other thing that I'm gonna email out to everybody, you're gonna get a couple of things from me. You're gonna get the disc sheet that's gonna have the whole disc profile in it and the link to take the disc assessment yourself so you can see where you fall on it. You're also going to get a bonus list of, of closes. So I have a bunch of trial closes, a whole list of them. I'm gonna send those out to you. I'm also gonna send you information on the rest of this, the listing series that we're running this month so that you can, um, so that you can uh, follow along. And I'm trying to think because I feel like there's one other thing I promised. And now I don't remember, but it will be written down. So I promise I will get that to you. And I'm also offering to anybody that's taken this call that would like to dig deeper into any of these tactics or just sit with me for 15 to 30 minutes and talk about your listing strategy, role play a listing agreement with me. I'm more than happy to do that. Just email me, Rita, R-I-T-A. Um, oh, a cheat sheet. Thanks, Joe. Yes. Okay. Yep. I will get you that cheat sheet. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you. The, the seller sheet. The, the seller sheet. Yep. 
Um, so email me, Rita M at kw.com, or just reply to the email that I'm going to send out with all of this good stuff attached to it. And we will set up a time to do that. I am here to help everybody uh, grow big businesses. That's part of my role as a team leader. Um, and I hope you all got value out of today's class and that you'll take the rest of the series of listings and share with me about your successes. Okay. Thanks everyone. Go take more listings. Yay.